I'm at Brackenridge Park in San Antonio, Texas. And behind me, there are thousands of birds. Have you ever heard the expression, birds of a feather flock together? Well, they're flocking together. They've lost all their identity. I don't know if they know it, but there's so many of them, they can't even stretch their five foot wingspan. They can't stand up tall and straight like you're used to seeing them along the marshes. No, they're all kind of bunched up together. It is the strangest thing. I know they're breeding. I know they're here for a purpose, but it kind of reminds me of life, how people can get in a rut and follow what everybody else is doing. The corporate party, the school party, the, the following the group and doing what the group wants to do. God doesn't want us to be following groups. He wants us to follow Him. And He wants us to set our sights on Him, not to be birds of a feather that always flock together, especially if it's the wrong crowd. Now, I know we can be with Christians, and we're supposed to be with Christians, and we're supposed to enjoy their fellowship and company, as the scripture tells us in Hebrews chapter 10, to stir up one another to love and good works. But we can't lose our identity. We can't compromise and do what the crowd does because they all bunch together, and that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to do with what the Holy Spirit leads us to do. We're not like anybody else. We are unique, and we're called by God for a special purpose and it can save your life. It saved my life. Let me tell you the story. When I was 17, I worked in Manny's Cafeteria in Santa Monica, California, and one of the guys there asked me to go out drinking and driving after work, and I could take one of the girls at work named Betty. He was gonna take another girl. I didn't have a piece about it. First of all, I didn't wanna drink. I hate drinking. I didn't wanna do anything with somebody else that was drinking and driving, and thank God I didn't, because when I get back to work the next day, you know what happened? Betty was dead. The car rolled off Mulholland Drive and killed her. I would have been in the back seat with her and probably would have died. Choosing to be an individual saved my life. It's proved me worthy in many times. I was wearing a cowboy hat in junior high school when nobody was wearing a cowboy hat. It wasn't cool, but I was Cherokee kid. That's what I called myself in junior high. And my friend liked to follow that example. So he became Bodie and his brother became Cheyenne. So Mark and his brother and I all hung around together. We were oddballs. Girls wouldn't touch us with a 10 foot pole. We were too individual. We weren't like the rest of the guys that were drinking and partying and carrying on like there was no tomorrow. But I knew there was a tomorrow and I knew my tomorrow was in the hand of God and I didn't want anybody to stop what God could do in my life. I wasn't born again at that point, but I knew enough of Jesus that I wanted to be set aside for the work that he had for me. God creates us to be individuals. You listening are like nobody else. Your good bad points, your good good points, your faults, your blessings, your gifts, and your callings. All those things fit together for God's purpose. If you will surrender yourself to Jesus and tell Jesus to use you as you are, that you're thankful that he made you for a special purpose, God will bless you and use you for his glory. And that's what he wants to do. He has a plan and a purpose for us. We don't have to be like a bunch of birds that lose our identity and all flock together and give up that individuality that God put in each one of us. I leave you with this word to pause and ponder.